Hey there, welcome to day 30 of our free 30 plus day get up and go challenge. October 2021, we're doing our ninth free get up and go challenge. We're just wrapping it up. Today I want to do a summary of the 30 days so far. And tomorrow we'll have a bonus day where we will bring everything full circle and we'll talk about the transformation. We'll demonstrate to you the transformation that each and every one of us have gone through as part of this challenge, this free 30 day challenge. Well, what do we do? We started out talking about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Why a 30 day challenge? Why are we doing a challenge? Why the get up and go challenge? Where did it come from? Where did it originate? And what's in it for you to do what we talked about on day two. And every day we not only talked about and had tools and a topic, but we also had an action item assignment that we did each day. So our tool for day one was pen and paper. Make sure that you're writing things down. Have a journal, a little book where you keep track of the things that you do and you learn and you discover about yourself throughout the challenge. Then on day two, we discovered our set point that we all of us have a set point for how we actually behave and change and what it is that we want in our life. I need a magnifying glass. Number th day three, we talked about what do we want and about infinite possibilities Day four, we talked about the key areas of our life framework, the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial relationships, contribution. And then I added in April of 2021, communication and confidence to, to take that from seven main areas of our life to the nine key areas and aspects of our life. And I set goals and objectives based on those because they help me to create a framework by which to, to actually make life understandable, to simplify it. <laughs> because most of our lives are very complicated. On day five, we rated each of these areas and aspects of our life. Actually, on day four, we prioritize them. What's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, down to nine, most to least important to you. So we prioritized on day four. Then on day five, we rated each of these areas and ourself, it's a self-evaluation, on a scale of one to 10. 10 being awesome, we're exactly where we want to be with this area and aspect of our life. One being Okay, we are in deep, deep doo-doo. Then on day six, we learned and we applied the seven why exercise. We thought about something that we wanted, and then we asked ourselves a series of seven whys to get down to really the core reason why we want something. On day seven, we talked about the core of why we want something, and we discussed our core values. On day eight, we discovered and investigated and asked questions and looked into our existing change reaction, how we automatically deal with changes and challenges and then on day nine we talked about changing our reaction and we used a tool called flip switching where we take something that we're doing and we flip it around to just the opposite we want just the opposite result and then day 10 we finally 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 introduced the soap framework which we use throughout the rest of the challenge it's guaranteed handling process for handling changes and challenges we started out by breaking down the SOAP framework and identifying and applying tools to the SOAP framework for three main areas of our life. We did physical first this time, and with respect to our physical story, the S in our, our, uh, our situation, we want to identify our current story and then our desired story because that creates the gap that we fill throughout the rest of the SOAP framework. So what's our story? We use the journalistic tool, who, what, where, when, why, and how, the journalistic framework to identify what our story is and what we want it to be. Then with respect to physical options, the O in our SOAP framework, we actually um, use the tool brainstorming and we brainstorm different possible options. Again, I always say brainstorm at least 10 things you could possibly do so that when you get to the A, physical A or action, you have something to make decisions about. And our decision-making tool was the urine analysis, which stands for urgent, resources, important, necessary, and energy. And then we analyze the different alternatives, which usually aren't, you know, apples to apples comparisons. We use tools like the urine analysis and the other ones I'm going to talk about in a minute to help us decide what should we take action on first. And we take action on that thing. <coughs> And the P in our SOAP framework stands for progress. And so PP, physical progress, how do we know if we're making progress or not? And that's when we discussed the lifeline exercise. And we mapped out our lifeline exercise. Key 
highlight points in our life and then we start to look for patterns and get to know ourselves better. Then on day 15, we dove into the area of our life involving relationships. And we use the imaginary friend exercise to get at our story or our situation, followed by the visualization and uh, or the use of visualization and imagination to come up with options for the relationship options, relationship action. Then we use the head, heart, intuition tool, which I have somewhere. Ta-da! Head, heart, intuition tool to, again, decide among unlike alternatives so we know what to take action on first. And we took action, and our tool for determining if we're making progress or not was routines, rituals, habits, standard operating procedures, processes, systems, things like that. Then we moved into the financial area and aspect of our life on day 19, and we used the storyboarding technique and change your story, or we can change or create our own story uh, to identify what was our current situation, what it was our desired situation, and how are we going to fill the gap in between. Then on day 20, we used the Power Vision Movie tool to visualize and imagine possible options that we could use for coming up with filling that gap. From that, we use nominal group technique, which I do have one of those, nominal group technique example, to, again, decide among unlike alternatives and decide what we were going to take action on. And then our, our uh, progress, our tool for measuring progress is actually measurement because what we measure matters. On day 23, we did the emotional soap, and our tool for the S, the O, and the A, and the P for that was the emotional guidance system. Day 24, we hopped into our mental soap, and we used affirmations cubed to come up with and analyze the S, the O, the A, and the P, and apply the soap framework for our mental, our mindset. On day 26, we ran and moved into spiritual soap, and... We used meditation as our tool for going through the soap framework for that. Day 27, confidence soap. We used the tool of hypnosis. And on day 27, we did our contribution, the area of contribution in our life. And we looked at motto, mantra, personal slogans, and our code of conduct, what we stand for, what we stand against. Day 28, we did communication soap, and we used gratitude as the tool that we used to look at the different areas and aspects of the soap framework and break it down and try it on and work it out for an area or aspect of our communication skills. Now, yesterday, we ran through some frameworks, and my head is cloggy, and I've got a cold, and you can still hear it, and so I'm not sure if I did an awesome job on that, but frameworks, like the soap framework, are things that help to make our life easier and simpler and more understandable and I think the older we get the more we realize the power in simplifying things making things number one we can communicate them better if we understand them but we can uh, share them with other people if we can break them down into a way that makes sense the one thing I did uh, last month that I haven't done this month, but I think it's going to be very similar, is I actually sat down when I was working with one lady and I broke down and I said, okay, what different tools have I been using for the S, the O, the A, and the P? And I thought that was pretty powerful. If anybody would like a copy of that, I could probably type it up and make it neat and turn it into a handout. But basically for S, we use journalistic framework, who, what, where, when, why, and how. For our story, our situation, we use storyboarding, we used imaginary friend, and then we also used Emotional guidance system, affirmations, meditation, hypnosis, motto, mantra, code of conduct, and gratitude because those apply to all the S, the O, the A, and the P. <coughs> For O, we specifically use brainstorming, power vision movies, visualization, and imagination. In addition to emotional guidance system, affirmation, meditation, hypnosis, motto, mantra, code of conduct, gratitude, thankfulness, and appreciation. For the A, we use the urine analysis, head, heart, intuition, nominal group technique, the little plus or minus, pros or cons, as well as um, the final countdown, which is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, do it. Just take action immediately. And then for progress, we use the lifeline exercise, measurement, processes, procedures, habits, routines, rituals, whatever you call them, things we do, uh, systems, procedures, things like that. Um, and basically what we want to do is we want to create an automatic pattern on purpose of doing this. We want to create and use tools and things that 
become automatic for us because we practice them and they, they become as easy as breathing. So today, you know, the first, the first 10 days of the, of the challenge are actually framework and foundational followed by introduction on day 10 of the SOAP framework. And then actually just repeating the SOAP framework over and over again with an example in our life to let us really experience it and then try it on for size. And the more we do it, the more we practice, the more we use the tool of the soul framework, the more it becomes automatic. It gets ingrained in our subconscious and it becomes as easy as breathing. We just automatically run things through the soul framework. Whenever anything comes up, I had got a new computer and was struggling with it. Boom, ran it through the soul framework, knew exactly what I needed to do. It's not working, I want it to be working. What are my options? All my different options, pick one, took action on it immediately and now I'm making progress I actually farmed it out to my son and I've got him helping me set it up so I don't have to be frustrated problem solved but in the past I would have struggled with it for at least two weeks before I picked a different alternative and just asked for help or farmed it out to somebody else <coughs> so all our action item is today is share the comments below one lesson you learned or one thought about the soap framework or a question that you're having that you need help with still that you want clarification on or more examples of or more tools for is there a part of the soap framework that we need more tools for to make it clearer and easier to apply to the different areas and aspects of our life that's it go out make it an awesome day i will be with you tomorrow we are going to repeat what we did on day five we're going to look at and see the actual transformation we've made in the different areas and aspects of our life just by going through this framework one time basically in each area and aspect of our life will we see changes i almost guarantee it i guarantee i see changes in myself every time i do it sometimes up sometimes down but that's the way our life goes if we're moving in the wrong direction that tells us we need to pay more attention to something all right questions asked that's it that's our soap framework for today i will see you tomorrow with our final day of this ninth time through the Get Up and Go Challenge. Have an awesome day. Bye. Excuse the roofers.